Hey guys, this is Travis with Bright Agrotech. Today we're gonna do a tour of the farm walls around downtown Laramie, and we're gonna talk about some of the unique locations that they're at, uh, why we're really excited about them, and uh, the progress of the growth on the walls. So here we are at today at the Travel Inn, and uh, this one's one of my favorite farm wall locations because I get to be a part of this really great beautification process that they have going on here. Uh, these guys have done a really good job of revamping this location, this, this old motel um, that hasn't been in the best of shape lately, but uh, just recently they've been taking major steps to beautify it, make it better, and uh, add to Laramie, and we're really excited about that. You can see that we have over here the farm wall on this unique placement uh, right here on the Welcome to Laramie sign, and it's right here next to the main road, so everybody gets to see this. Uh, but like I said, I'm really just grateful to be a part of this whole bigger project that they have going on here because they're doing such a great job of it. Uh, they, put, they put in the waterfall here and the pond with the fish in it and they've just blown this place up with flowers and I think it's really great that they're doing this uh, for themselves and for Laramie as well. Uh, let's talk about the plants for just a second. So like I said, this guy's doing really well but some of the maintenance things that we're gonna have to cover here real soon are uh, with the mint. We'll start with that. You'll see right here what we have going is these runners are coming off of the mint plants and this is the mint plants way of reproducing. And so this, this part of the plant is focused on running into another section of ground so that it can reproduce and create another mint plant. And so because it's spending less of its energy on this green foliage, which is what we want, what we're going to go ahead and do is start to just chop them off. Uh, the next thing that we'll look at is this rainbow Swiss chard right here, which I'm really loving. It's beautiful, uh, but it's about, it's getting real close to the time where it needs to be maintenanced and harvested too. And the rainbow Swiss chard is something that needs to be continually harvested. It will be uh, we'll just go ahead and come in once a week and pull a few of the largest leaves off of there and then go ahead and donate them down to the, the soup kitchen in town. And that'll allow room for some of these smaller guys to grow. Kind of do the same thing with the mint plant. Uh, we don't want it to just grow out and super bushy and too big. So generally what we'll do is come and take the top third of the plant off. It needs to have still plenty of uh, vegetative growth for photosynthesis. So that's why we leave the bottom two thirds, um, but we're gonna go ahead and harvest this top here pretty soon. Okay guys, that's about it for Travel Insight. Uh, follow me over to Cross Country Connections where we'll check out the next one. Here we are down at Cross Country Connections, uh, downtown, second and grand, Laramie, Wyoming. I am just ecstatic about how well this wall is growing right now. Uh, it's just absolutely killing it. Uh, I think one of the one of the big factors for this wall doing so much better, uh, doing better than some of the other walls that we have, is that it has this really nice shade here in the middle of the day, which keeps some of the direct uh, intense sunlight from coming down and, and just making it work really hard just to live rather than grow. Uh, as you can see here, the tomato plants are just doing excellent. Uh, we're working on trellising them over. are uh, doing that every day, coming down, checking water levels, and also just working these guys over piece by piece. Uh, you know, obviously the plant is naturally want to, gonna wanna grow out and up, but every day we just come over here and we just start to move the plants over, start to tuck some of the branches back behind the trellis, just kind of manipulate it over a little bit every day. Just that little bit of stress will change the direction of the plant and allow it to grow in a different direction. And eventually we'll be able to go out and uh, it'll be a lot easier to maintain the cherry tomatoes on this wall um, instead of being on the ground because they're just so easily accessible and spread out. And as you can see right here, we've already got some coming up. Um, I think we had our first first last week and they've just been starting to rock out really well. These guys are loving it. Here's our Francesca broccoli that we have. This is once again our uh, our lime, lime green broccoli with the hexahedral spin to it and the broccoli itself is doing really well. 
or the foliage is anyways, but we are not quite starting to see any production of the, the broccoli head itself, but that's just fine. Uh, as you can see, the nasturtium's just rocking it as well. As I told you guys before, this is my edible flower that is uh, spicy in flavor, but it's also a pest deterrent. So we love to have that in the walls. Mint, as you can see earlier, we need to start go ahead and kill on these guys, these runners off a little bit. And we have some of our lettuce here. Uh, this is actually pretty fresh lettuce. We had we came down and harvested last week and uh, put up this new tower. We took all of the lettuce down to the um, down to the soup kitchen, and that was really amazing. We were able to take a big box of fresh lettuce to them when they didn't have any, and I was even able to take in a full tower to them and chop it off and harvest it right there. I don't know if you guys knew, but these towers are super mobile, and you can just pull them out. Uh, they're a great advantage for small farmers so that you can just take take these live towers right down to the market and sell them off or in our case we can take them right down to the soup kitchen and cut them right off and then give it to them and it really gives those guys a sense of, of where their food's coming from. And this is my spearmint and she's just doing beautifully. We have some more Swiss chard and the tomatoes. Well that's about all we have for this wall. Um, like I said this is going to be a really quick tour and showing you guys what's going on with everything. But uh, now we're going to cruise over to Star Awards and Signs and uh, show you the progress on that wall. Star Awards and Signs, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this, is, this is an excellent site as well. This is our largest location, as our largest display. And uh, I think it's, it's really beautiful too. You'll see here that we have we have the trellises and the tomatoes, just like over at Cross Country Connections. And uh, we've just done a little bit different with these guys. We're experimenting with with uh, using some ropes and pulling them over instead of uh, just working them hand by hand. Um, and I, I think that, that both are seeming to work out very well. So I haven't decided yet which one's better, but I think they're both doing pretty good. This wall is not only the, the largest wall that we have, but I think that I really like this wall because of the involvement of the business that owns this, this wall in this location here. Uh, Chantel, she, she has a couple of kids that she brings to, to work with her uh, most days, and uh, they are the reason why I love this wall so much is because they're exposed to it and because they get to enjoy it and they get to work with it a little bit. And, um, and because they really love it. Their excitement is what makes me so happy about this wall right here. Uh, you can see that a lot of, a lot of the ve vegetation is real similar uh, with the tomatoes, the nasturtiums, the mint, and the broccoli. Uh, we've got the same mix of plants everywhere. Uh, these guys are doing really well, but they're just a, a slightly more stressed than, than the last wall we were at. They don't have any shade and so they get the full direct sunlight and I think that's what's keeping them from growing fully. I think it's just a little bit a little bit too intense for them. Um, which just goes to show you, you don't need the exact perfect location to be able to grow great food. One adaption that, that could be made to this, this wall would be uh, light shade to come up over the top of it and I think that would really help the, the plants to bloom and rock um, and I don't think that and I think that would be pretty simple to make too. So that's uh, the thing that we're learning from this wall today is that uh, maybe sometimes we could just build a light shade over the top and keep them a little bit happier. So now we're going to run over to coffee engineering and I'll explain what we have going on over there. Okay guys, here we are at our last but not least location of Coffee Engineering. The mounting of this one is also unique because we were able to put up two smaller walls in separate locations. Uh, I'm really excited about how it enhanced the beauty of this business by creating a really nice entryway for them and, and then also just a little bit of uh, customer interest for them as well. Um, this location is doing really well as far as vegetative growth goes. 
Uh, it also gets some shade in the morning and the afternoon because of this walkway that's right here behind me. Let's take a look at the plants. So the only one we see in here that's really different is these, these chives right here that are doing really well. Uh, what we've learned is that over is that it's best to plant these guys pretty close together and then that way they can fill in a full row like you'll see right here. Uh, nice full row of beautiful chives there. Right here we've got some stevia and it is so sweet. It's unbelievable. It really is. Mint here is just doing awesome. Growing thick. Loving it. And some more of our broccoli here which is just killing it time and time again. Um, so like I said, it's pretty much the same thing. One of the maintenance issues that we're having with this wall here is that we were unable to put another reservoir tank in there uh, because of the it's so low to the ground here. Uh, so this one needs to be filled up more often. But there's other ways to remedy that too. Some of the, a lot of the problems with water usage is from evaporation, uh, which we can mitigate with evaporation tank, evaporation caps that we put over the tops of these holes here which keeps all the condensation just dropping right back down into the reservoir instead of coming out. Uh, that's really positive. Uh, we also sell top-off tanks, which is uh, essentially just a, a grow tower that's completely enclosed that you can fill with water uh, that we can put inside of this middle tank right here and uh, just fill it up and just top it off with that by releasing a ball valve that's in the bottom of it. All right guys, that's about it for this wall here. Um, but please stay tuned, we got a couple of really cool videos coming up. We're gonna do some interviews with the local businesses that, that have these walls on them and uh, also the contributors, the funding contributors that have helped us put this project together and make it all happen. One thing that I wanna keep you guys' eyes open for is one of the next videos that we're gonna do being a, uh, the importance of the hydroponics and, uh, and the farm wall project that we have in the, in the world as far as water and food scarcity and uh, how we're benefiting our community by doing this.